Andrew and Frank. Hi guys. Hi. Hello friends, how are you today? This video is a little bit different. With this video, I'm gonna be talking about different toys. A lot of times I get the question from parents, what toy should I buy my child to help them with their goals or their skills? So a little bit about what I do. I am an early childhood special education teacher. So a lot of my students, they range from birth to five and they're in my um, classroom because they have some sort of developmental delay. So the, more, so the majority of my children, they come to my classroom with IEP goals. And those goals, they focus on play goals, social skills goals, cognitive goals, um, expressive and receptive language goals, and fine and gross motor goals. So as a teacher of preschoolers, I'm always looking for toys that will engage my students, that will also teach my students while having fun. So while I was on the hunt, I ran into this toy, okay? I ran into this toy and I knew this toy was gonna be a game changer and it has been a game changer for my classmates. So what's so wonderful about this toy is that it does, it is a ball drop, which who doesn't love balls? Kids love balls. But what's so wonderful about this one is that it has so many different compartments to open. So of course, this is a perfect goal for making choices, but not only is it good for that, um, I like to give my students the opportunity to follow directions. So a typical um, skill or lesson may be, I might say, pick one. And so say my student picks this one. And then if they need help, I'll help them to, with the, to guide the toy in. And I might say, push or touch. And they touch it and it goes down. And what's so good about this goal, it's not very long, but it also, once it does drop, it allows them to retrieve the, the ball several different ways. One thing that I do with this toy also is I teach turn-taking goals. So what'll happen is I will, so once that student has put it in here, I'll say, okay, how do you wanna get it? And then they'll choose how they wanna get it. And then what I'll say, okay, it's, such and such is turned and they will hand that toy to their friend. And if they're learning that, um, if they're learning how to do that, we will do hand over hand, in which I'll talk about in another video, hand over hand to where they'll hand over that toy to their friend. One thing I love about this toy is because this toy is so fun and so engaging, they learn that waiting goal. They learn to wait because they want to do it again. So this toy it does so many things. So when I, realized that this toy came into a kit i said i have to have that kit i have to have it i have to buy it me and my students we have to see we have to get it because we're just like if it's anything like this i gotta have it so the reason why i'm making this video is super excited my box came today and i'm gonna go over them basically say what you might want to do if you want to get them or if you are one of my um, students' families, you'll kind of see what we're going to be working on when we engage with these toys. Um, so I do want to say that Love Everly is a subscription box. And with this box, this box comes for different age groups, right? But what I do want to say is that you always, you're always going to encounter a child who will love a certain toy. So a lot of these toys, they might be above your child or below your child's age. But if that toy keeps your child engaged, that's all that matters, okay? So even though this box, um, it may be geared to a certain age limit, um, try to find toys that are where your children are, okay? So basically what I'm saying, if your child um, has a developmental delay, um, say to speak, and say they're, they're three years old, so you're always looking for that 36 month old toy. But if that toy is developmentally too above them, it's just gonna frustrate you and, and your child. So find something that they can learn because every child, once they know how to play with the toy, they will enjoy the toy. So even though don't go off of just of the number on the box if, you, if your child does have a delay, okay? So with that being said, let's see what this box is all about. So the first, and these toys do have names. 
So this one is called the Circle of Friends. And what I like about this one is it has faces. Children love to see faces, right? So this one is perfect for, of course, by motor. You can even say, um, where's yellow? Put on yellow, so they would do that. Uh-oh. Or you could say, uh, where's the big block? That's the circle. Where's the big circle? That's the big circle. Where's the little circle, right? But one other thing you could do with this toy that I'm gonna do is that we're gonna look at expressions. In our classroom, we learn, we're learning imitation, right? So with this friend, we might say, what is he doing? Is he smiling? No, you smile. Show me a smile. Show me excited. So it's so many things you can do with this toy. But another thing that I would do with this toy for my students is I would, instead of using these children's faces, I would put my students' faces in these, in these um, circles. So that's another way we could learn name recognition. So we would say, oh, here is such and such. Where is he? And then when I say, oh, can you wave? Then I might say, who is this? Stand, please. There's so many things you can do with this toy that would also do um, name recognition, following directions, at the same time, hitting that fine motor goal. So this is that toy, which I'm gonna be using this. So super excited about this. And another good thing about these toys, these are wooden toys. These toys are wood. These are nice, good toys. So that's that. The other one is, this one is called the Bunnies in a Felt Burrow. The good thing about this toy is that this toy can learn, you can teach counting. So you say one little bunny, two little bunnies, three little bunnies. So they could practice putting in, taking out. You can even say, give me, give me bunny. And then they could put it in your hand. Or what you could also do is that you can count the bunnies and then you can sneak the bunny away and have them look for the bunny, right? So that's something you could do with this toy. This toy is soft, it's durable. And if you don't wanna use the bunny, you can also stick other things in this. And I like it because it's small enough just for the little hands. They can go inside, get it and look and they can learn counting. Um, you can even do eyes, nose and ears. Where are your ears? Touch your ears. Touch your nose, touch Bunny's nose. So many things you can do with this toy too. That's not just fine motor, but like I said, you can hit all those goals during that one with this little toy. So even though it looks really simple, you can still do a lot with this toy. Um, you can also, um, just thinking of things that I could do with this toy right now. Once all of them out, you can say, oh, here's one for you. Give one to such and such, or give one to your friend, or give me, you could do that too. And if they're not doing it, that's, to that's totally fine. That's when you would do that hand over hand. You say, thank you. And, but eventually they will learn the concept of sharing. So you can also do that with this toy. The next toy is, um, let's focus on this one. This one is a, this one is called the flexible wood stacker. The reason why they do that is because it's like that flexible right again all of the toys are wooden but what I like about this toy is that who doesn't like to stack right so you can practice stacking counting sharing you can do matching orange where's orange and a lot of times if the child is learning to match where's orange and then they put it you say oh Orange, you've got oranges on. You can say, up. Oh, where is green? Oh, there's green. Green is on. It's the same. It's a match. So those are things you can do. So you're teaching matching, um, the fine motor of picking it up, putting it on. Um, you can also do take off. 
and you can take them all off. And you can also say, give me orange once they've learned orange or different colors, or you can say, give me two. Give me two. And another thing, when you're teaching these things, everything has to be taught. So when you're saying, give me two, and if your child has never done this before, you do. Oh, here's two. And that's how you would teach that. So a lot of times um, parents get discouraged because they're saying, give me two, but that skill has never been taught. So always, I always tell my parents, always do hand over hand or modeling is what we like to call to show the child what to do, how to do it and make and to make it fun. And then, of course, it's just the back and forth. So they can just stack it on and wiggle and waggle. So it's a lot of things you can do. So you can do matching, um, receptive language, fine motor, so many things you can do with this toy. And again, this is the wooden stacker, flexible wooden stacker. Okay, so of course, who doesn't like a good book, right? So this book is Bedtime for Zoe, and I'm not sure, but I think most of the books in this, what most of the kits come with the book. So one thing I like about this book is that it features in this book what's in the kit, right? So, of course, um, I might say, oh, there's a ball, where's your ball? So I'm like, get your ball. So they're following directions, right? And so of course, I'll read it. And if your, if your child has a short attention span, um, you can just look at the pictures. You can say, oh, oh, do you see her hair? Just just having your child engaged sometimes is enough when you're um, teaching your child or reading to your child. Don't feel pressured to have to read the book word by word, even if it is a small book like this. Your, um, your child might just like to look at oh, balls. Can we count the balls? Another thing you can do is you can say, oh, would you like to turn? And turning, believe it or not, is another goal. It's a fine motor goal. Then you might say, oh, he's in the bath. We're going to take a bath. So a lot of times, too, try to, when you see a book, try to engage your child with what they're going to do so they can kind of make that connection. Oh, he has bubbles. We have bubbles in our bath. And again, I didn't mention anything about what Zoe is doing, but I am still engaging the child with this book, right? Um, but if your child is one who is engaged, of course you can read the book, but if not, please do not get discouraged. Just looking at it, um, you might say, oh, look at his eyes. Where are your eyes, his nose? Um, oh, oh, he is wet. Does he like it? Do you like it? Simple questions like that. But what I love about this book is that it is a hard book. Not too many words, but the most important part is that sometimes we fail to realize that children like looking at other children and not always a cartoon, not always a character, but just children. So these books also have real pictures. And even this one, um, she has, this mommy has a, a pregnant tummy. So uh, quite a few of my students have moms with pregnant tummies and I might say, oh, whose mom has a, who has a baby in her tummy? So I'm making that personal connection. That's another thing you can do with these books. Not just in this kit, but look for books that have children in them. That way you can work on expressions. Um, you might say, he looks tired. How do you do tired? <gasps> tired or oh, he looks surprised. Show me surprise you're working on um imitation or expression so that's that of course that's just a standard book um nice simple book and then this one is wooden also it comes with three different tops the tops are kind of silicone like this and what you do with these is that this for this one there is these little carrots right again um with this toy with my students i would do this in a session because um for choking hazards or just you know some of my children they have sensory issues so so they necessarily they always want to kind of like mouth it so just to avoid that um we kind of work with them but if you have a child that doesn't mouth or they don't need that um Right on one, they can practice this alone. But with this one, they just practice putting in, and you can count one, two, and then you might say, touch, carrot, 
one, two, and then if they're not putting it in by themselves, you can do hand over hand and you can say, up, oh, in. Then you say, you do. And if they can do it, that's awesome. Whoa, we love it. If they can't, you just keep working on it. And then once they get them all in, most children love to take them in, put them in, take them out, put them in, take them out. And then of course, you can, if you wanna store them, you can, of course, drop them in there to keep them safe and you know where they are. Um, especially if you're doing home visits like me and you like to keep all your pieces because the worst thing is to get to a home and you do not have a ball. Your kid's upset, you're upset because you're like, ah, oh, you're not gonna be able to do it. So it keeps it in there. So this one, uh oh. So that's for that one. So it comes with three tops, like I said. This one right here is the coin drop. And it comes with one, two, three, five coins. And again, you can say put in. A lot of times kids struggle or they might do it like that. And what I do is I say turn, 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 up, drop like that and again if it's um a child that needs hand over hand you just kind of guide them and you say drop drop and whatever you do always do a lot of expression children love expression um they get super excited when you're just like oh in and then you might even say pick one circle you can do so many things it's endless but so that's that for that one they can just keep um practicing the fine motor um one good thing too that I believe is in this kit or that this kit speaks of, I didn't read it, of course. I just, these are just ideas that I'm thinking about and they might be in this book, I don't know. But I do think this book does give you, it comes with a book of different things you can do with this kit. But I do think that they do want you to go um, maybe and like do the yellow one first or top first or something like that. I feel like, I like for my children, I've noticed that when a child gets to a point to where they master the toy, they love it and they're more engaged to say, okay, what you got next? What other, what other thing do you got that I can do? But if you put too many, um, if you put too many things in, in front of them that it's just difficult for them to accomplish and they never really actually, they're never actually successful at that, they will lose interest in it and they'll get um, defeated and it's just bad. So I've noticed that when my children get good at it and they actually learn that I'm putting this in, they're engaged and they wanna do more. So if it takes your child longer to engage on one toy, that's perfectly okay. Go with them at their pace, cause it's play. It should feel like play and not work. The other one that it does not come with a piece, but it does have is this one. And with this one, they say that you can put Q-tips in it like this, you can put in, or you can use pipes, um, cleaners, all those little things. But this one also is for fine motor, put in, take out. Um, again, um, these toys are endless. There's so many things you can do. Um, with this kit, um, again, if you're my family, don't purchase the kit. I got it. We're going to have fun with it. But if you're not with me and you guys are interested in this, I would guarantee I would buy this kit. I think it's a wonderful kit. Um, and I am going to be doing more videos like this. If there's some things that you want to know about, um, just leave a comment and I'll, I'll make a video on it. Bye.